As many of you know, I, uh, I am a transplant. I am Jamaican and I have lived in Canada for the last 25 years. Now, like a lot of Jamaicans, I, I want to go home. Yeah, I love Canada. It's a nice place to live and all of that, but it gets cold. And you know, as you get a little older, everybody wants to go home, go back to, to the sunshine and don't have to deal with all that warm snow and all of that sort of thing so with that in mind every everybody i am sure well most of us anyway want to build what we would like to call our dream house in jamaica and so that brings me to the topic of today and in fact the topic for the next i'm pretty sure several weeks because this is intended to be a series and this series will be about building your dream house the things you can expect from from the process of building your house from getting the land to all the legal processes that you have to go through um, to acquire the land and then uh, what uh, what is required for you to before you can even put shovels to the ground so to speak so you are going to need a bunch of things all the, the title you're going to need for your for your um, property um, the drawings you're going to need, um, the type of construction that you're going to have, the sort of um, uh, workers and all of that that you're going to need, all that sort of thing. We're just going to try to go through them as much as possible. But before we start all of that, there are some things that you have to really and truly think about. Because if you're going to build your dream house in Jamaica, the first question you have to decide is what kind of house you're going to want to have. Now, I have seen, and this has been a trend for a number of years, including from the small district where I am from, where a lot of people equate a large house with success and it being their dream house. Now, it, while when a lot of people are abroad and they, have, they decide to build a house in Jamaica, the first thing they think is that, well, you know, it is cheap and it is easy to build a house in Jamaica. And so they, they, the first decision, decision they make is that it's going to be a big house, you know, five bedrooms, five bathrooms, upstairs, downstairs, um, on a large plot of land, very, very large rooms, all that sort of thing. But if you think about it carefully, you're an empty nester, most likely. You have, say, lived like myself was, have lived in Canada for 25 years. It's just going to be my wife and myself when we go home. Of course, I have brothers and sisters and lots of them, but they all have their own places and they, they have children. But those kids are going to be coming to stay with us for what, maybe a night or something like that. Maybe my mom might come over and stay with us. So the question is, do I need a very large house with three or four bedrooms and uh, and those bedrooms being very large or do i need a small comfortable place that um having built that place and put in i can then equip it to the standard that i that i would like so for example instead of having rooms that are 16 feet by bedrooms that are 16 feet by 16 feet you could have them much smaller 10 feet by nine and a half feet a perfectly good bed will fit in that with all your cupboards and all your air or anything else that you may want to put in there and the upside of that having such a small much smaller bedroom one it's easier to build it's cheaper to build and let's face it you are coming home or going home from somewhere where you you are accustomed to comfort and you may want to air condition such as uh, uh, your bedroom at night a large bedroom is quite expensive to air condition it's easier to simply get a small unit stick it in each bedroom and um, and it will not cost you that much of course that's apart from the initial outlay of building the thing in the first place here's the other thing too you may your your site might not be very large and you may want to build you after you build you may want to have an outdoor experience so you may want to plant fruit trees you may want to plant um 
uh, flowers. You may have want to have a nice lawn. You may even want to build a nice gazebo. In fact, you may even want to have an outdoor jacuzzi, because having not utilized so much money in the in building a large house, you will likely have a little bit of excess cash to spend and splurge on the luxuries that you deserve, having worked over all of these years. I know you're in your retirement. You know so. I guess the point I'm making is this. Why build a very, very large house when nobody is going to live in all those rooms? Why not just build something that is small, luxurious, comfortable, easy to maintain, and, well, relatively inexpensive to build? So with that in mind, let us turn our attention to a very necessary but sometimes unpleasant part of building in Jamaica and that is legalities now before you any before you build in Jamaica you may want to familiarize yourself with the building act now this is the older one there's actually a building act of 2018 which I, I, I really could not find um, in 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 I, I searched around and I couldn't find it, but it is essentially the same thing except for a few updates that make references to a building code. Now, before we get into all of that, let me state categorically, there is no building code. There is no official building code in Jamaica. In other words, <coughs> um, to, to you, you are going to make application, as, as you can see here, you're going to make application to your local parish council um, to build a, a, a dwelling. And that application has to be accompanied by a drawing. Now, if, if your dwelling, if the building you're going to build is less than 300 square meters, then it, um, as I said, all buildings have to be accompanied um, all applications have to be accompanied by the draw, a drawing of the building that you're going to be doing. But if the building is less than 300 square meters, then it, the, the, the drawing does not have to be done by an architect, by a licensed architect. What the act says is that it can be done by a draftsman. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what that is. I suspect that um, based on what a draftsman used to be in England and the, and the building code that we use is about 150 years old. Um, and most certainly before Jamaica became independent. Um, so that building, I hear they are, they're referring to a national building code. There is no national building code. This code, this is just garbage. It does not exist. So um, it, 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 it's, it's rather weird. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. You are going to be required to submit an application to the, to the, the local um, parish council. So you're in Manchester, it's going to be the Mar Manchester Parish Council. It's going to be in Kingston, it's going to be um, the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Council, and so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. Depending on which parish you're in, it's going to be that local parish council. Now, you are required to submit a, an application. That application must be, con must, must be accompanied by nine copies of the, of the build, um, drawings. So having submitted those nine copies of the drawing uh, to your local parish council, this is a typical application process. So here you are, you submit uh, your completed documents. It goes to the parish council. Um, here's your pre-consultation. And that is where I showed you where you had that section that said um, official documents and so on and so forth, where the parish council would um, ask you all the necessary questions about cost and so on and so forth and then it goes for a pre-application pre review um, so at which point now this is where people usually run into problems you may have forgotten to fill out a small section 
you may have forgotten that you know palms are greasy uh, <laughs> uh, or you may have genuinely forgotten something or some or you may have there may be a, 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 a document that you may need that you have not um, enclosed you resubmit it um, it goes back for your pre-application preview again um, it goes it gets processed um, as I, again as I said in this instance if it's over 300 square meters then it gets referred to an agency for recognition within the specified timeline if it's under then it is approved and um, and given back to you or disapproved depending or not approved depending on sometimes quite legitimate conditions and that would be where you would begin to build this is a very large legal hurdle that you need to you need to get get over and that is to the submission of your of your application to your local parish council and have that and, and and have them approve it now let's say you have settled on uh, your all the necessary things you need to get your house done let's say you have done your survey you have applied to the par parish council for your building permit you have received that building permit you have settled on the basic design of your house um, and what you want your house to look like blah 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 now let's go on to some things that are very very important and these are some of these are perhaps things that you should have considered before you bought the land presuming you bought the land but here here are some important things your amenities how are you going to get your amenities in what sort of amenities do you want to have because remember you are retired and you want to live in relative luxury so to speak or comfort is really what we're looking for here so <clears throat> what do you want you're going to need water you're going to need sewage and you're going to need electricity so the question now is this how is the is the is the uh, plot of land if, is the is the building site close to the road or is it accessible by uh, a truck so the question then is can a truck come come right up to your building site and dump a load of marl or just dump your building material right there that's a very important thing if not then here's the other question is it going to cost you a lot of money to build a road to get to your building site because if it is going to cost you more money to build a road to get to your building site well unless that building site is very very important to you and you want and that's absolutely the way you the, the place you want to build then it might not make any sense it, it just might not be cost effective to do so you want to consider that now here's another consideration you're going to have to have sewage and unless you live in say kingston and well kingston really and and eat, uh, only in some parts of kingston you are going to have you have to have a soak away pit that's pretty much anywhere in jamaica so let's be you know clear about that and a soak away pit is um, it's pretty expensive to build but that's not the real issue there are lots of places where the um the ground below maybe two or three feet is quite rocky and almost impossible to dig a hole that's more than 10 feet deep or even 10 feet deep so what are you going to do in that in 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 that case so that is something you need to consider the second thing you can't you need that and that is for your sewage the, the second thing the third thing really because you have considered well i don't even remember where i am in terms of first second or third but anyway the other thing you need to consider is um is your water supply so in the country areas for the most part you are going to have to um set up your own water supply and that's going to consist of either a large external above ground storage which we call it a big plastic drum in jamaica and those are available commercially 
that's not really that hard and um, you simply order one order the one that you want order the size that you want and the quantity that you want and then you simply set them up where you want them and run a pump um, so that you can pump your water into your house that's one thing or you can have a below ground storage which is what we call a tank you remember the whole tank business you dig a big hole in the ground you cement it around um you cover it over you run your gutter from your house uh you you um you strain that water you run it down into your tank and then you pump it back out and use it now i personally prefer that method but also you are going to um it is not cost effective one and two not reliable to simply just have a pump that pumps your water straight from your tank or whatever uh, whatever um above ground storage you have and into your bathroom and your kitchen or say you're going to water your lawn or something like that it's not a cost effective way of going so it's going to your system should in from my point of view be a hybrid system so you may you may have a very large tank um, that is above ground one of those commercial types that you have bought and installed properly and uh, and safely a lot of security around it i mean you could probably build up a um, build a concrete wall high enough to prevent people from accessing it but in any case you are going to need uh, a storage system water storage system on um, that is gravity fed so you'll have a large drum on top of your house into which you will then pump water so just in case you lose power you you still will be able to use your you will still be able to use your water take a shower wash your dishes flush the toilet all of that sort of thing the other thing is and this is important for all us people who are getting older. Um, we don't like to shower in that cold water in Jamaica anymore because we have been spoiled and so we are going to need a little bit of warm water to shower in. Now, there are two ways you can go about that. You can have a small on-demand water heater in your bathroom and they're very very small and to be honest they really don't cost that much to run and you simply before you take a shower you simply turn it on turn it to the temperature that you want and it will simply just take that edge off the cold water or as hot as you want depends on how you like it so that's not all that bad that's this easy that's an easy install and it's relatively cheap to, to purchase you can also have a solar water heater which a lot of people in Jamaica have and all you are going to do uh, the, the only expense is going to be the initial cost and after that is almost maintenance free so it will pay for itself some you know many times over after you install it so there there is that um there are a few people also who have windmill operated pumps to pump water from their below ground tank up into their um their elevated storage so uh, again apart from the initial outlay cost of um, of, of the windmill uh, that is you know free again so you're reducing the operating expense of your home so that's where we are for in terms of amenities so of the amenities that are that are absolutely necessary when it comes to jamaica as i've mentioned before is electricity and um the distance that you are from from the the road that is to say the distance you are from the main power supply is also extremely important because the the transmission wire that you are going to need the the size and type is specified by the jamaica public service and um they will if you are a certain distance from the road and i don't remember the exact distance that it that that they 
that um, they will, but they will provide um, wiring up to a certain distance from the road, from the main power supply. After that, you will have to provide your own wiring and, um, and it can get quite expensive. So that is another thing that you are going to need to consider when you are deciding where and how far from the main you are going to build. So that, that is very, very important. Um, and the, the, the rates, as you can see here, can get quite expensive and that is one of the reasons why I again recommend solar wherever you can in terms of water heating um, and perhaps even a significant portion of, of your bill you can offload onto solar depending on the amount of money that you're willing to, to lay out in the, in the beginning. So but the Jamaica Public Service as most Jamaicans know is the is the monopoly that has the power supply um, the supplies power in Jamaica and that's about it you don't get power from them you're gonna have to make it yourself so that is that again is the other amenity that you may have to consider as you go along in terms of in terms of your building cost now well you have stayed with me so far to this to this point so I am going to presume that this is something that you find interesting and um, I want to thank you for that. The, the idea behind this series is to provide um, people who are potentially uh, returning residents and um, and people who would like to just you know come to a beautiful island and and make it their home is to provide them with practical information that they can use as a starting point and um, to, to begin to consider building their, their house in Jamaica, their dream home in Jamaica, so to speak. And to that end, um, this series is going to continue. So um, that's going to be it for this, for this installment. And um, but in the next installment, we are going to talk about the the, the, the materials that you are going to need in, in building your house, the cost of each type of material as they exist at this point. Um, we are going to also talk about the how to calculate the total cost based on the recommendations that I give you. And one of the more, most important parts of building in Jamaica, the cost of block concrete blocks and so on the various types that you're going to need um, and as a general rule in J Jamaica uses um, uses 8 by 8 by 16 blocks that, that's that is the general type of the, the, the general dimension of blocks that we use um, we are going to talk you know building mold using a mold as opposed to the form casting um, and whether or not you should use a contractor versus supervising the thing yourself or if you're going to use a contractor what part of the construction process would be best you you suited for a contractor and what parts you could use you could supervise yourself because a contractor can be expensive and let's face it you're going to if you're building in jamaica and you live abroad it is almost a certainty that you won't be doing it in one shot. And unlike building abroad, there is no frost and wind, winter to consider. And it being a concrete building, you can build, pause, build, pause, and continue along the line. So that will be the next, um, to those basic things will be the next topic. Labor, building cost, um, type of, materials and all of that so stay tuned and I am going to try to get this make this a weekly thing so and I'll inform you as to when the next one will will be available so thanks for watching again and don't forget to like subscribe and please share on your various platforms because we'd like this information to go to as many people as possible so they could make an informed decision thank you very much